So my friend Steve Gutowski, and I, I'm pulling this story up because I have a few things up here. So my friend Steve Gutowski, who is, it's a new site called thereload.com, and you should, this is one of the things that is on my reading list, so it should be on yours. Listen to this headline. Let's just, just keep in mind what David Chipman just said. Now listen to Gutowski's headline here. ATF agents corroborate existence of racial complaint against Biden director nominee, fear reprisals, and hit to agency effectiveness. Gutowski reports that multiple ATF sources back up the existence of this complaint. This apparently came up earlier. We're going to ask him about this. That alleges that Biden's nominee to lead the ATF, David Chipman, made racist comments during his previous stint at the agency, at the ATF. Joining us right now on his report is Steve Gutowski. Stephen Gutowski over at TheReload.com. Good to see you, my friend. I like your, I like your, uh, your radio corner, too. It's uh, very nice. I appreciate that. So good to see you. So... First off, because this is a complaint, the com- the the complaint itself and news of it isn't new. But what is new is the fact that now other people are apparently confirming that it does exist. Tell us about this. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there's a FOIA lawsuit to try and bring the, these complaints. There's actually several complaints be- against David Chipman. But one of them relates to a, uh, a situation where a black agent in the ATF accused him of saying that uh, – uh, the number of black agents up for promotion was was unusual and he didn't think it was right and that the black agents must have cheated in order for them to have uh, gotten up for these promotions. Uh, and there was an accusation that came out that that that's what was said. And um, it was in the news uh, a couple weeks ago, but it was just one source. It was this new group, um, AAF, uh, that's been scrutinizing a lot of Biden nominees and there wasn't anyone else backing it up. So I, I, I thought, you know, I would look into this. Uh, none of the like other a reporter, yeah. So a reporters do, <laughs> right? And so uh, you know, I, I started asking around. It's not easy to get ATF agents on record to yeah. get them to talk to you about things, as you might imagine. But I was able to find three, two of which corroborated that they had heard this story before this uh, lawsuit was ever filed, before this became public knowledge. So this is something that has been going around the ATF for years now, uh, since uh, he was in Detroit at the time when this happened. Uh, he was a supervisor in Detroit. And so, you know, the the very fact is that it exists. We don't know the details. We don't know, uh, obviously, uh, whether or not it's true or not. Um, I mean, but the complaint exists, and I think it would be fair for the public to be able to see it before he gets voted on to, uh, to be confirmed to the director. Now, that's a really good point on that as well. Talking to Stephen Gutowski over at TheReload.com, who has a report out about not just this the, uh, on this complaint against Biden's ATF nominee, David Shipman, ATF chief, uh, but also now there are three, three agents that are corroborating this. Now, you just because it is incredible. I mean, the ATF doesn't routinely or ever really remark on anything at all so the fact that you spoke to three people who actually were saying yes this this yes this does exist and this has been this is something that everybody is aware of that to me is incredibly significant because it 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 i mean not only does it suggest maybe that he you know probably maybe there's something to this where there's smoke there's fire but it also kind of sounds like there, there there's like some effort to maybe undermine this guy from taking over the ATF from within. Do you think that, I mean, does he, does it seem like he has a lot of support within the, within the agency? No, I don't think he does. I I mean, that's the other thing that these agents told me, all all three of them were concerned about uh, the, the effect that his confirmation could have on the ability of the ATF to actually run down cases. Um, The ATF actually requires cooperation from a lot of uh, FFLs, licensed gun dealers, to get tips to make cases. And if you put someone who is a, an activist, a gun control activist, a paid gun control activist, David Chipman, since he left the ATF, has been working directly for a number of gun control groups. He still works for one today, uh, Giffords. Yeah. Um, and they're concerned that his presence at the top of the agency could have a, a detrimental impact on the relationships that agents have in the field with FFLs, the the people who bring them, uh, you know, tips on somebody might be, you know, running guns essentially, because uh, you know, and I think they also are concerned about his uh, credibility within the agency, because most ATF agents, I mean, obviously the ATF gets a lot of demonization uh, from gun gun rights uh, advocates, and understandably so in some cases, obviously, but uh, most of your average field agents, and this has been my experience, 
are, are pretty pro gun people. They 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 like guns themselves. They own a lot of guns. Uh, and and so Chipman is a bit of an outlier here in that when he was at the agency, because two of these agents actually worked with him. Yeah, they and you got names on record, yeah. which is significant too. Yes, uh, uh, Vasquez was was one former agent who worked with uh, Chipman while he was in the ATF years ago, and you know they they all the both of them said that he wasn't this anti gun guy when he was working there, and it wasn't until after he left and started working with these gun control groups that he started to espouse these sorts of points of view. Uh, where he wants stricter gun laws, he wants new gun bans on things like the AR-15, he wants stuff that's more extreme than what uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein from California wants. So, uh, you know, there's sort of this distrust that exists with some of these agents uh, when it comes to this guy and who he really is. You know, there's sort of a lot of people have in the ATF have opinions about each other. Not a lot of people really know, know where to what to how to pin this guy down, like what, what he really believes and what he really thinks. And they're worried about him. Yeah, no, and you make a really good point talking with Stephen Gutowski over at thereload.com because if 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 he's been working well and still working with uh, a gun control advocacy group, the Giffords organization, I mean that is pretty significant because as you said, you know these ATF agents that they have to work with these FFLs, these federal firearms licensees, these are the storefronts that everybody knows. They have to work with those those people regularly, and if there's criminal activity, sometimes the FFL it's within their discretion. They can say this, you know, this seems sketchy, or you know, I'm not really sure what to think about this, you know, what just happened here, and they can reach out to whatever agent is in their area. And they can work together because they want to also make sure that bad, dangerous people don't abuse or or with their criminal activity do anything that would jeopardize our rights. And that Chipman being at the head of all of that because of all of his comments, he's a chatty Cathy. That makes it so difficult. And that's the other thing. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. Maybe I, I, I look maybe I didn't pay enough attention to what all of the other ATF chiefs have previously said. But this guy coming into it. He's been he's given so many interviews and has talked so much about gun control and really demonized. And I, I I'm not using that word to exaggerate. I mean, he's like talking about regular folks like they're Tiger King. He actually said that. Uh, I don't I just that does. That's incredibly troublesome. Has there ever been anyone who's been that, to your knowledge, that politicized themselves before even going to the ATF? No, I, I don't. I don't believe so. Not as director. Um, obviously, it's only be- become a confirmed position over the last couple decades mm-hmm. here, and there's only been one uh, actually confirmed director in that time, which is sort of one of the arguments that Democrats use for why why he should be confirmed. But the fact is, he's much more political than most other ATF directors have been. I mean, it's a regulatory agency. The, yeah. the point is to regulate the gun industry, not to try and shut it down and make policy. Um, right, and, and so the issue for a lot of these agents was like they they view themselves at the very least what other other people think of atf agents many atf agents especially field agents people out in the street arresting people for violent gun crimes they view themselves as nonpartisan they they try to treat they, they try to act in a way that's not hyper partisan and so chipman's role in his time after the atf is goes completely against that and so these guys don't want to see him come in and be made the director of the agency. Like it, it sends the wrong message right. to the FFLs that they work with on a regular basis to try and do their actual jobs. Yeah. So I'm talking with Stephen Gutowski over at thereload.com. So, how do you think this is going to play out with his process, this whole nomination process? I mean, I know so far there's been a lot of contention over it. I don't know, honestly, if he's got the support in the Senate to make this happen. What does something like this do to that? Yeah. I mean, I think this is going to be something that gives some of those Democrats who haven't come out to support him yet, uh, Angus King of Maine, Joe Manchin in West Virginia, uh, John Tester of Montana, like they're already on the fence about him. And any, you know, more accusations like this coming out are not going to be good for his nomination. The longer he waits in limbo, the less likely it is he's going to get confirmed. And I'll actually break a little bit of news for you here. I'll have yeah. more of this over at the new, the, the reload.com in, in a few minutes here. But Senate Republicans on the Judiciary Committee are actually calling for new hearings uh, on Chipman because of these revelations. They want to see these complaints. They want to see if there's, you know, what what's in these complaints and and whether or not they disqualify him from from becoming director. It's just amazing to me that with the as long as these complaints have been present and apparently well circulated within the ATF, that that didn't come up in his previous testimony. 
before the Senate. I mean, that's that's kind of wild to me that they did not have that the first time. I mean, just, you know, it signals some kind of effort, at least, to keep that under wraps. Wow. And so there do you think they'll get that? Well, I would imagine. Will they get that here? And I would imagine they would have to. I, don't, I especially as this news gets out further. Uh, you know, uh, they might. Uh, obviously, it's a 50-50 Senate, so they have a little more uh, sway than usual as a minority party. And uh, But you might also see Democrats withdraw his nomination. I wouldn't be surprised to see that either. The mm-hmm. last, Even Trump withdrew his nomination, even when, he had, when Republicans had control of the Senate, because the nominee wasn't going to pass. And so right. if, this, if it becomes clear to Senate leadership on the Democratic side that Chipman is not going to pass, I, I would imagine they won't even try to put him up for a vote. Yeah. Last quick question for you. Talking with Stephen Gutowski over at TheReload.com, and he just said, I'll have a piece up about this coming up, that uh, Republicans on the Senate Judiciary Committee are asking for another hearing based on this now, this confirmed complaint existing against ATF nominee David Chipman. If it's not Chipman, do they just go back uh, to, because I know that they've, they've, they've had an unconfirmed uh, uh, I can't, uh, Ramondo, I believe, uh, unconfirmed it at ATF. And that's sort of kind of how it's been for a bit. I mean, do they just go back to that status quo or do they, do, do they have someone else waiting in the wings and if, who would be that person? Yeah. I mean, I think they'll stick with an acting director for now. They, they can have acting directors for up to a year. It has to be somebody who already works there. So Chipman can't be made mm-hmm. acting director. Um, and then I would, you know, it wouldn't be surprising if they tried someone a little bit, a little bit less controversial than Chipman, right. maybe a career person who hasn't actively worked for gun control groups. And then you could probably see someone like that actually get uh, confirmed. But uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens with Chipman first. Man, this is this is crazy that this wasn't even that they didn't even have this at the first hearing. Oh, my goodness. Great job, Stephen. Great job. The reload dot com is the site. Go and check it out. And he uh, will have an update to that on ATF uh, nominee David Chipman here in just a bit. Stephen, good to see you. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, take care.